I'd like to share some things. I'm excited about the Word of God. I'm, I'm excited about this young man receiving Christ. You look like a different man tonight. Wow, the glory of the Lord is on him. This has been a good week for us. Uh, I won't go into I could go off. On, but anyway, I want to just say that four souls came this week, uh, came into the kingdom of God. Amen. Four souls. And uh, I just have to share this. This this one that man uh, that received Christ, him and me grew up together. I met him when I was 12 years old, and we went into Air Force together. But the Lord had been placing him on my spirit for the last two years to find him. I didn't know where he was at. So we found him and everything. And uh, Susan me wanted to go up to Lake City. That's just uh, about a two-hour drive up to the old farm and everything and just look around, see what's going on. And um, I said, no, I just don't, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to uh, uh, follow the Holy Spirit and get it, and that's what we're, we're in training to do now, Susan. I mean, each day we get up, Lord, the steps of a righteous man are order of the Lord. What do you want us to do today? Now, there's certain things, there's many things I can do, but Lord, what do you want me to do? And it was like, you got, Clar you got Clarence Catterton's telephone number, Yeah. Honey, would you give him a call and see if he would like for us to come up and see him? And I'm, I'm going through it real quick now. And so she called, and he said, yeah, I want to see Bob, too. And uh, we hadn't seen one another in 50 years, I guess. So we went up to Hollywood and out in the woods and all. That was an experience. Uh, wish I could go into every detail. You, you would laugh. But anyway, we got up there 10 minutes ahead of time. That was God. And we went in there. Well, anyway, he was on the porch. He came out, and uh, I got out of the car, and we met each other uh, out in the yard and hugged each other, you know, and everything. He's 80 years old, and, uh, of course, I'm 80 years old, and uh, two 80-year-old men greeting each other and used to play marbles together, and we dated together, you know, with other women and all. We dated, not each other, but, I mean, we dated women together. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> but you know, you know what young people do, you know. And don't you? <laughs> so anyway, uh, but we talked and everything about old times and everything. And I said, Clarence, I said, I'm going to get right to the point here. I said, do you know the Lord as your personal Savior? You know, you just got to ask people. Just, just be brave. Do you know the Lord as your personal Savior? You know? And uh, he said, well, I believe in him. And I said, well, let me tell you what the gospel is all about. So I shared the gospel with him. And I said, Clarence, would you like to receive him as your Savior? And he said, yes. Oh, what a moment that was. I took his hands and I led him through the sinner's prayer. He accepted Christ as his Savior and everything. So I'm doing this and Susan's over there on the couch with his wife. And she's leading, leading her to the Lord over there. And so there two souls came into the kingdom uh, yesterday, and that's and all of y'all have a part in that. That's why I'm sharing. I'm when I share something, I'm I'm not saying look at me, yippee dippy do. No, I how many's past that? I am so far past that garbage. I don't even want to talk about it. But I want to know what is the Lord doing. I'm excited about um, uh, Mrs. James there. The word she got was. The Lord is the keeper of my soul. Now, I don't know what that does to you guys, but it's done something for her and it's done something for me, and that has stuck with me all week. When I think about it, I almost get, that's the air conditioning blowing on me, but I get chills. I mean, I get, it's like the Lord is the keeper of my soul. Anyway. You'll just, you know... <laughs> I'm the leader. I'm trying to lead you guys on to the higher ground. Oh, that's exciting. Isn't it? Okay, okay. Got one there. Anybody else want to clap? <laughs> Can you imagine the angels in heaven? What were they doing when those two souls were saved yesterday? Man, they was all excited going to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is Lord. Blow the trumpet up there. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Go ahead. Let's hear the trumpet. Go ahead. Let's hear the trumpet up there. Uh, we got to work at that, Frank. 
Let, give it to Willie. He knows how to blow it. Look at Willie. Oh, my goodness. What are we coming to church for? To glorify the Lord. And we're going out from this place to, to win people to Christ. To tell people the good news. Good news. My goodness. I pulled out my wallet. I got a $100 bill. Now watch y'all get excited. Look, 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 at the, look, at the, look at the smiles on y'all's face. Look, look at this. Yeah, here, yeah, let's see what I got here. I don't have a dollar. Now watch y'all get excited now. Look at that, a $100 bill right there. Wow. Look, 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 look. Wow. <laughs> I mean, look, look at Charles back there. He's doing the double stuff. <laughs> Get him on the camera, man. Oh, look at that. Look at his wife. Hey, it's flying to y'all. I shouldn't tease y'all that way. But it, it, it looks, ah, yeah. Somebody was one to the, uh, the Lord today. I got $100 I want to give somebody. Hey! <laughs> Shame on me. But it, it, isn't it true? I mean, you're getting excited about, I mean, the $100. Yeah. Just think, two souls that won't have to spend eternity in hell because, because you all are faithful. Faithful. All right. We're talking about ruling and reigning in Christ. The first scripture is uh, on the board. And uh, let's turn to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Remember the first initial command that God gave man was what? Somebody tell me. To take authority, take dominion, rule. Here's the earth. Now go out and rule, multiply. Everything's uh, under your control. Rule. All right. And we said they didn't rule and reign. And what happened? They give the devil a place, didn't kick him out, didn't rebuke him, didn't take authority over him, and they give in to his temptation, and it has caused a ripple effect right on down to all of us. And because of that one sin, because they would not rule and reign, they gave in to the temptation, and now we're in this trouble today. The world is in chaos. Boy, if you've been following the Middle East, all right, let's read it. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. Next verse. And God blessed them. All right, what's our scripture about blessing now? What's our scripture? Somebody can tell me about uh, the scripture that I've had on the board that I'm teaching you all to bless one another instead of cursing people. Anybody remember that? Quiet in here. First Peter 3, 9. Remember that? We don't curse people. We bless people. Today, I was driving down the road. We, we, come, we had to go downtown, and we were coming back, Susan and me. And this man, I want you to catch this. This man had the nerve to come right around in front of me, just like that. And if I didn't put my brake on, I'd have hit him. And I looked at Susan, and I said, what should I do? And she said, bless him. <laughs> See, I knew, that I knew, but I was checking her out. So I blessed the man. How many has ever had that experience? Somebody pulled in front of you. Did you bless him? After you cursed him, right? You cursed him first, and then you blessed him? Okay. But see, you have to, ch we, 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 we develop these habits. See, we have to be alert and alive, get our mind under our control. Even here tonight, I'll guarantee you, some of your minds are probably in Texas, Louisiana. Louisiana? Where's your mind tonight? Rick, where's your mind tonight? Air I thank you for what you're doing back there. But get it off the air condition. It'll still be there after this meeting, okay? Come on in, young lady. And I got all your mind on her. But here, even tonight, can you rule over your mind for, for about 30 minutes and not let the devil cause you to think about that fried chicken or that piece of pie you didn't eat tonight or that ice cream in the refrigerator? Get this over with real quick. I'm hungry myself. I, I tell you, I, I'll see you all later, okay? Is that not true? Huh? How many times you've sat here, how many believes the devil comes to church? <laughs> Everybody believes that. 
How many times have you tried to worship the Lord and your mind goes on something else? Probably criticizing the, the song. Well, I don't like that song. Anybody ever do that besides me? Look at that. Yeah. That, that human part of us just pops up. You just have to take authority and dominion over that and say, shut up. How many this week have had a big hard time trying to keep your mind on that which is good and honest and noble and upright? How many has had a hard time trying to keep your mind on the good things of life? Let's see hands. Yeah, we all have. Huh? Huh? The enemy don't give up, and we can't give up. But remember, we got the victory, but we don't have to let him run shotgun over us. We are to take dominion, all right? What does this say? And God bless them. Remember, we are here to bless people. Bless, bless. Charles, catch it. Bless. Good. Rachel, here's one for you. Where's Willie? Wait a minute. Here it goes. And I'll do it. I'll get it up there. Yo! Got it. Frank, here's one for you. Yo! <laughs> He's the keeper of my soul. See, you've got to take authority. First, you've got you to master this right up here. How many of you know I'm talking to Bob Tilton too? Huh? I know where the battlefield is. And so do you. And God said unto them, Be fruitful. Well, I think we've all been pretty good along that line. But fruitful, not just in the natural, but fruitful, what? In the spirit. You read uh, St. John about the vine. Remember the vine? Jesus is the vine. We are the branch. Who, the Father is the vine dresser. And he comes along and trims, trims us. You know, if we get too bushy and too da 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 all of a sudden God will bring one of his children along with his clippers. Clip, 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 clip. Oh, he's got too much joy. We've got to clip him. Clip, clip. Clip, clip. Clip, clip. <laughs> oh, we were doing so good. I was so proud of that one little fig that was coming out of my, on my little branch. And all of a sudden, oh, my goodness. But why does he do that? Because we can bear more fruit and grow. Wow. All right. So be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. What does subdue mean? Hmm? Conquer it, control it, conquer it, subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Now that was the command that God gave Adam and Eve. Next. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in, the, uh, in which <coughs> is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat. Next. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herd for meat, and it was so. Next. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the six days. So what a command that God gave Adam and Eve, and they had the authority and the dominion to go out and conquer. And the first thing that comes along is this creature looked like a snake to me, and his name was Satan. 
the tempter of our soul. Have you met the tempter lately? Are you being tempted every day? How many people have you sent to the moon this week? I lost count. You lost count? <laughs> conquer. Conquer your emotions. Conquer your feelings. And then you discover something. I can't conquer anything. Then you make a discovery in the Word of God. Philippians 1 6 on the board, please. <clears throat> Philippians 1 6. <clears throat> Being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you, say, a good work in me. And you need to write that scripture down. You need to memorize it. It is God working in me, making me willing to do his good pleasure. Because the human element is not willing, and you've got to rely on God to change you from the inside out. Now, not many people understand, if they're not connected with the Holy Spirit, that it is the Holy Spirit that will change you on the inside to cause you to reign and rule over every temptation the devil throws at you. Hello. Because you'll try and fail. All right, let's go. Everybody say, try and fail. Have you been around that mountain lately? Have you been around that mountain? Yeah. Yeah, you go, and you'll continue to go around that mountain until you come to that place that you will rely on God's word and you will say, Lord, you said in your word that you are working in me, making me willing to do your good pleasure. And it's going to take revelation for you to see that. And once that revelation hits you, you quit trying, you're free. You're free. You're not striving anymore. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I know some of you do. I'm not, I'm not cutting you short. I know. But it comes to a place that your whole faith, your whole being relies upon God to change you from the inside out. You know, you look at somebody, they do everything right. That's good. I always like to do everything right. That way I can hold on to my pride. I look good to everybody. What's going on the inside? What's going on inside of all of us? You ask yourself the question. Get in touch with yourself in that area. Lord, what are you doing? What have I asked you to do? You said, Lord, you would continue that work until when? The coming of the Lord? Being confident of this very thing that he, which is God Almighty, which has begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, until the rapture. Now, what is God doing in you? Now, don't let everybody step up one time and share, one at a time. What is God doing in you, making you willing to do his good will? <laughs> you mean we got to think when we come to church? Think. That's scripture, you know. Think on that which is ugly, which is double ugly, mean. Think on what? what? Think on what? Think on what? Can you all hear me? Everybody hear me plainly? Okay. <laughs> I'm challenging you. Think on what? You know the scriptures. Hear me hear it. 
Think on that which is good, honest, noble, upright, pure. All right? Are we having fun tonight? Isn't this exciting? See, this is how Susan and me go into the Word of God now. Susan? Boy, do I really give her a hard time. It's awful. I do a bunch of stuff. But she gives me a hard time. See, she sharpens me and I sharpen her. Are we doing that, Daddy? Are we thinking on that which is good? Are we thinking on God or are we thinking about somebody else ain't doing what they're supposed to do? Say, so you've got to guard your heart with all diligence. All right, if you're going to reign and rule in heart, you're going to have to turn to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Let's start with 20. If you're going to rule and reign. Listen, let me tell you something. If you don't understand what I'm saying here tonight, your whole life will be a shipwreck. We all have to line up with these principles. Your pastor, these elders, these elders' wives, these teachers. Every one of us. And I say that with gentleness. Did I say that with gentleness? Pretty gentle. Did I, did I say that? How many of you know I love you? Man, do I love you. I got the job to perfect you guys for the work of the ministry. How many is hearing what I'm saying? Raise your hand. All right, that was a big job, wasn't it? I shouldn't. Have, I shouldn't ask you to do that. Raise it again. Let me see the. That's good. You're, I just want to know if you're awake. All right, my son, my daughters, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Wow. Now, I'll ask a question. Why? Why? Anytime you want to get up, tell me. Just get up. Come on up here and join me. Why? Why? Why should I not let them depart from my eyes? Because you'll forget them. Is that not true? You know, I, I often wonder. I've, se I've seen people this way. I can't get them to say a thing when I'm challenging them like this. How many love me tonight? Just a little bit? Okay. But the minute they get up, <laughs> come on, love me, church. I mean, you talk about everything under the sun. I remember this woman. I tell you, she couldn't quote one scripture. You're, she's in heaven now. I, I used to, I say, God. If I had a brain like that, she could remember every detail to a story. I mean, every detail. She'd paint it red, blue, purple, turn it upside down, tell you what was underneath, what was on top, what was on the side, what was on this side. Every, I mean, she knew every detail. Couldn't quote one scripture. What is that? What is that? Guard your heart. Guard your heart with what? All diligent. Why? Why guard it? Because the enemy will steal it from you. Matthew 13. The enemy comes and steals the word out of their heart. All right, look at it. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. That's our job. That's our job. Verse, the next, that's, okay. For they are life unto those that find them. That's why. Life, life, powerful. My word is life and spirit, Jesus said. For they are life unto those that find them. You mean that everybody don't find them. Let me tell you when you find them. Andy, I'm picking on you. We're friends, aren't we? Brothers and sisters. You challenge me and I challenge you. She came excited Sunday. The Lord is the keeper of my soul. Not that don't do nothing for you. But Andy was doing the jitterbug. <laughs> that, that life came into her. The creator of, of heaven and earth. 
the creator that holds everything together with the word of his power is the keeper of my soul. Wow. See, that became rhymer to her. Then she hit me with it, and it became rhymer to me. What was I thinking about? What was I remembering this week? The Lord is the keeper of my soul. Devil. How many of you understand what I'm saying? See, how many know I'm pressing? I don't know how much more time I got with you. But I tell you, I got some things I got to make sure that every one of you know. And you're going to have to put out effort and obey the word of God. Listen to this. And I'm not fussing. But I know one thing. If you don't, you'll be back there in my office one counseling. And that's all right. We'll counsel you. All right, here we go. For they are life unto those that find them, and what? And health to all their flesh. How much money do we spend on trying to stay healthy? Including your pastor. Is that not true? The insurance is going up. Up, up. My insurance on my house went up. What do I have insurance on my house? Paul didn't have any insurance on his house. <laughs> Why do I have insurance for myself? Paul didn't have any on him. And he's in heaven. We just want to stay down here a little longer, right? And be miserable. When we could die, just go to heaven and enjoy everything up there. We'll be in there. I can see us all up there now, jumping and jiving around that great cloud of witnessing. Don't buy your insurance. You're just stalling your time to stay down in that mud. Uh, just don't, don't, don't just die and come on up here with us. We have fun a big time. Because I know I can't put that DVD out, but anyway, it would shock the religious world. I know you're not there yet. Okay. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their what? Flesh. I got a big testimony I'm going to be sharing pretty soon about health. Keep thy head. Don't let them cut it off and send you to, what's that, heaven. Oh, I'm, uh, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Let me help you with that one. It took years for me to understand that when God gave me the revelation. Charles really helped me on this. Can I share about what you said about the purse? I don't want to get you in trouble. Rachel back there smiling at me. See, Rachel goes to, buy, uh, to Balo and Walmart, and her pocketbook is open. And so I come by and I look, oh, a thousand dollar bill. <laughs> Put it in my pocket. And she's looking at how much this costs on this cereal. Uh, that's too expensive. Put that back. Uh, too many milligrams in that. And her pocket is open. The next guy comes along, takes another thousand out. And of course, Charles don't know this yet. So what I'm saying is, you have to guard your heart and make sure the devil doesn't steal the Word of God out of your pocketbook. How many of you understand what I said? I brought it down to street language. When I said pocketbook, that meant your heart. You know that. Now, your pocketbook is open. And I have this chewing gum in my mouth. And I got, I'm looking for somewhere to put it. And I'm walking along, and, oh, there's uh, Rachel's pocketbook again. <laughs> Throw my bubble gum in there. She goes home. Charles! Yes. Did you put this bubble gum in my pocketbook? No, you know I don't chew bubble gum. I dip snuff. Hey, that's a good one. Let's just change it to snuff. Hey, the pocketbook's over. Yeah. How 
many have ever, how many has ever seen people dip snuff? Huh? Let me see. Mary, do you, you dip snuff? <laughs> oh, you've seen people do it. Yeah. The old timers used to do it. You know, how about this? <laughs> Hit the stove. <laughs> All right. Something's going on over there. But you get the point. We have to watch out what we allow to come into our hearts, but we also have to guard our heart and make sure the devil don't steal out of our heart. Like our joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Someone says, I don't have any strength. Do you have any joy? You've allowed the devil to steal your joy. Here's how it works. Everything's fine. You're happy. Everybody in the fellowship is doing great. The phone rings. Susan answers the phone, and I'm over there. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Susan's on the phone. Okay, Willie, you're back in the hospital. <laughs> you what? He's what? Willie's back in the hospital. So I can pick on Willie. And what happened to my joy? The joy of the Lord was my strength. <laughs> the joy of the Lord was my strength. Now, I say that. Now, listen, I say that because many times our joy depends on the circumstance and how well all the kids are doing and all your bills are paid. I love it, don't you? You know, and you got money in your pocket, but it ain't always going to be that way. What if it ain't like that? Do you still have the joy? And if you don't, then your joy is on circumstances. And if the church, the turkey stances, I mean the church, <laughs> excuse me, the circus, <laughs> that's pretty good, turkey. <laughs> I never heard of that. See, I got turkey in my mind. I think Susan got some turkey in the refrigerator. That's what it is. Okay. <laughs> but see, our joy is, is, it's on the circumstance. Everything is going well, so I got the joy, I got the joy. And something happens, what happens? Something happens with the circumstance, and it turns upside down, and you didn't get the raise. You thought some, the boss was going to give you a $1,000 raise, and it was the other way around. They paid you $1,000 too much uh, three weeks ago. Now you've got to pay it back, and you done spent it. That's what happened to our Social Security check last uh, last month, they wrote a, they, I got a, 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 a little letter from the Social Security, and, and it said, uh, it was on Susan's Social Security, and uh, we've uh, overpaid you $450, so the next time uh, in, in August, that's, yeah, this coming month, uh, the only amount of money will be in there will be 150 so you're going to pay us that money back because we're not going to give you that money. We're going to keep it and, uh, because we overpaid you, so you, there'll only be $150 in there. And then the, the devil robbed all the scriptures out of my heart, my mind. It all flew away. The old man rose up on the inside. <laughs> and I just cursed those people out good and proper. They ain't messing with my money. Who do they think they are? I'll call my congressman. Come on now, church. Come on now. I'm, is that not the way we are? Huh? Is that the way we are? Yeah. But see, we're changing that. We're changing. What do we do now? 1 Peter 3, 9. We render evil for evil. Huh? Did I get that? We render what? We render what? Good for evil. So what did I do? I read that. I said, hallelujah, glory to the Lord. And Susan said, hallelujah, glory to the Lord. I said, all together now, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm 
dead indeed unto sin, but I'm alive unto God through Christ Jesus my Lord. I do not yield my members as instruments of unrighteousness, but I yield them as instruments to the Lord. And I thank you that I'm dead indeed unto sin, but I'm alive unto God. Hallelujah. I got the victory. Money is only paper. So what? Susan won't be able to have her hair curled up for three months. You know, I'll find a way to, you know, to adjust things because I'm ruling and reigning. And so, you know, I know she likes to uh, get a, a new uh, jacket every once in a while. And so that, you know, for a year she won't get no new clothes. You know, I know how to rule and reign. How many know what I'm doing here? Is anybody connecting with this new type of teaching? Huh? Some of you don't, 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 don't get it. You get it all right. You know how you act. I like to have a camera one day on every one of you, and then we'd show it on one Sunday morning. Now, Brother Bob, tell us the truth. How did you get that lump on your head? This frying pan came across the living room. Don't read the book I'm preaching, okay? Am I hitting anybody? Am I hitting anybody tonight? Am I hitting you? Am I hitting you tonight with this message? Please tell me now. Am I hitting you? Andy, anywhere? Yeah. I'm hitting myself too. See, we don't like to see that. But you see, that's okay because there's no good thing in the flesh. And are you still looking for something good in your flesh? I'm not. But I thank God we are learning to keep our victory, our joy, and we are learning to guard our heart with all diligence. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Okay? I want you to see this stream. I want you to see this stream. Everybody see the stream here? All right, this is like right here. And let's just say that I let a bad attitude come into my mind right here in my heart about somebody in the fellowship or somebody in, in government. I mean, it's like, boy, I wouldn't vote for him if he was the last man in the world. How many has ever said that? No, I don't want to see. All right, we let that in the stream of our, in our heart. Two years down the line, who's running for president? This guy that down here two years back that we allowed, we didn't guard our heart, and we, let, and we allowed that bad attitude to enter to our heart, and it locked in there. Two years down the line, he's running for president, and let me tell you, he changed from there to here. He got right with God, became a Christian, and he's got great wisdom. But the issue is of life now, the issue, I ain't going to vote for him. Because I locked in back here that he was a, a worm in the cabbage patch and he was not the type of person that I want for president. And I locked that in the stream of my heart. So two years come down the line, this guy's got converted. I mean, God did a great job work in him and he's the man for the job. And now there's an issue. But because I got that bad attitude in, in my heart now, I have to deal with this issue of life. This man is the man for president, but I ain't voting for him. Why? Because you didn't guard your heart there. And now you've got to deal with an issue here. And I'm just using that one example. Now, if you'll check your lives and, and, and you see your attitude towards certain things and people, you go back in your life and you, you will see that you didn't guard your heart. And now the issue of, of life and death down the road, two years down the road here now, because you didn't guard your heart back there, and now you've got to deal with this issue. It may be in marriage. It may be in relationships with others. And you locked in on that bad attitude back there, and now it's affecting this issue of how you're going to treat that brother or that sister or vote for him. Or, how many understand what I'm saying? You see, if you follow that through in all of our lives, this is why we have to 
guard our heart and not allow to have that prejudgments of things enter into our heart. Because it's going to flow downstream and it's going to deal with some issues of life that we have to deal with. And because we didn't guard our heart back there, that negative attitude is going to affect that issue of life. Boy, I'd like to labor on that. How many understand just a little bit what I said? Let me see your hands. Okay, that's good. And you and you and y'all work on that this week, okay? How many of you know I love you? Okay. That's a little bit different teaching, but if if we don't get down to the nuts and bolts, how many know what how many know what I'm talking about, nuts and bolts? You know what I mean? Nuts and all right, nuts and I didn't say you was nuts. I said I said you get how many's ever put a bicycle together on Christmas morning? Because you didn't read the mandal, you threw it over in the corner. And the handlebars is on the back. You know, the wrong nut on this. How many, some of you can identify that. See, if I don't bring it down to where people can identify, they won't know what I'm talking about. We have to bring, when you, te when you teach your kids, you've got to bring it down where they can understand it. I guarantee, I, I mean, I can, I can preach. You want, want me to preach for the next hour? No, I can preach. There's a difference in teaching and preaching. And, I, I, you know, I'll preach some to make sure everybody gets, you know, come alive. What you need is the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. That's what you need. That's preaching. See, everybody have a... The power, the power, the power, that's what you need. The power of God. The power is not of the flesh, but it's of God. You need it in your life, son. Young man, you need it in your life. You'll be young again. <laughs> that's preaching. And that's good, because it, it just drives right into you, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Wow, that's good preaching, Brother Bob. And that's true. That's what we need, the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to start preaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit pretty soon. I said, preach it now. Okay, preach it. Preach it, Bob. But we're getting down to the nuts and bolts. How does it work? Where does this nut go? Where does this bolt go? The handlebars don't go there. They go up in front. See? So we have to learn all these things. Now listen to the Word of God. Keep thy heart. Whose responsibility is it to keep your heart? Everybody point to the person. Good. All right. Good. Do it. <laughs> because the enemy will steal it away from you. And we're not ignorant of his tactics. We're not ignorant of his way of doing either. So keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it. What is it? For out of it. What is it? Hmm? What is it? Heart. It is heart there, for out of it, the very core, the very heart of our being, not the heart that, that pumps blood. It's good to keep that heart, too, in good shape, you know? But out of the very core of our being, the very essence of what we are, for out of it flows the issues of life. For out of it are the issues of life. Got five more minutes. Turn, put um, 1 John 1, 8, first. Now, I'll ask, I'll ask you a question. 1 John 1, 8. If we say that we have not... No sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Now, John wrote that in there because there were some people in his day that were saying that uh, once you become a Christian, you can't sin anymore. Oh, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? I, I, I'll vote on that. <laughs> but that ain't true. So what does it say? For we, If we say that we have no sin, 
We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And this is why sometimes, if you're not careful, you've got to know the difference between condemnation and conviction. That's important. You see that? The difference between condemnation. Condemnation will always make you feel bad, will put you down. But conviction, you see, Lord. God, I see, and I'm sorry. God, I confess that, Lord. Very important. And sometimes I, I, I hate to teach like I do tonight because I know that if you're having trouble with condemnation and you're accepting what's coming from your pastor as condemning you because you're not perfect like somebody else, you'll pick that condemnation up and you'll go out feeling condemned. This is, say, you've got to, we've got to take and deal with that spirit of condemnation. We've got to hear the truth and know that the truth will set us free. God don't love us because we're perfect. God don't love us because we do everything perfect. Remember that. Psalms 10, I think it's 103, says that he remembers, but we are but dust of the earth. He remembers that. He's, he's the God of compassion. And there's some truth that I don't want to preach to you guys because I'm not sure that all of you are free from that spirit of condemnation which puts you down and you can never do anything right. And sometimes it's your fault, I may, if, I, if I may say it, because of your thinking. And all of a sudden you're thinking about what you didn't do or what you've been doing, and none of us like to be exposed except me. I'm truthfully. I want to be exposed because I want to know the truth. I don't want no lies attached to me. It hurts to be exposed. Let's just say, I know there's nobody lazy in here, but let's just say the Lord would say to you, you're lazy, that's your problem. Now, acknowledge it. Are you or are you not? When it comes to the things of God and maybe the things of, uh, around the house, does your house look like um, Hugo? Remember Hugo? <laughs> See, some of you are laughing. I know when you got ten kids cr crawling on the house. I understand that. I, Susan has been married. We had three kids, and they always cared, brought their friends. So that was six kids. Then they brought their friends. That was nine kids. And I come home. Now you've got ten kids. How many understand what I'm talking about? How effective, are, are you still affected by condemnation? Be honest. Be honest. God knows it. Rachel, let's, let's hear you. You feel like you're pretty clear from it? You think so? Good. Okay, we'll see. I'll check you out on that. Yolanda, how are we doing? You, you feel like you're majority, from one to ten, free from condemnation. Huh? Nine. Nine? Okay. Okay, make sure you read that up here now. Missy? Just be honest. Now, God knows. Huh? F from one to nine. What did he say? What did she say? Eleven and a half. <laughs> what did you say? Seven and a half. Okay, that's honest. That's honest. all right. Now come up against. Now you. Now see. Now that's something you come up against. You know. Yeah. 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 I. I sometimes I. I don't know if I'm free from any of it because I go home and beat myself up every Sunday. So y'all think I'm perfect. Yeah, but see, so, but you know, now here's, here's the, if you don't recognize it, you wonder, why do you feel down? Why do you feel bad? See, I'm trying to help the people of God. I suffer all of these pains that you do. Rick, 
From 1 to 10. 7. Seven. Okay. From 1 to 10. What'd she say? Did you hear her? What was it? Say that again. With my family, I feel condemnation. And why do you do that? Because I'm going to tell you something. Two, two reasons why uh, condemnation will manifest. One is it's the enemy. He loves to put God's children down. Nothing you've done. You can be perfect. He'll put you down. And this is where it's so important that we learn what I'm talking about. Because you'll pass that on to your kids. And it'll just go to the next generation, next generation. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Mm. You're not going to do everything right. There's a lot of pressure on the people of God today. There's a lot of pressure on the wives. Is that not true, Rachel? Rachel, I'll tell you that. She's got three kids. You've raised how many kids you've raised? Five. Five kids. It ain't easy, is it? No, it's easy. No, it keep you on your knees, too. Some of you may have to get those pads <laughs> for your knees, you know. You <laughs> Don't you accept that condemnation anymore. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over that spirit of condemnation. I rebuke it and I command it to go. She's cleaned by the blood of Jesus. Father, I thank you. She receives that cleansing right now. I command that spirit to leave her in Jesus' name. Yes, you will. You will go. She will not receive it from her family. I rebuke that spirit of condemnation that's always putting people down, always pointing the finger. That judgmental spirit, I bind it in Jesus' name. The devil's full of it. And I thank you, Lord. Your word says, therefore, there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. We are fully accepted in him. In Jesus' name, amen. And I want to say another thing. Sometimes that our conscience is not clear and the Bible says that the blood of Christ has cleansed our conscience from all dead works. And sometimes, if we're not careful, we'll work ourselves to death trying to please people to get them to accept us, to re and we, we, we think that that will relieve some of that condemnation off of us. But I'm telling you right now, you'll never please the devil. And if you are a perfectionist, and I'm being honest, and I love everybody in this place, plus myself, believe it or not. That spirit of perfection will drive you nuts because you can never do anything good enough. Am I speaking truth in this place tonight? Yes. All right. Now, you're free from it, and don't you receive it no more. Now, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And see, by receiving that condemnation, it affects you in the, in the issues of life that you have to make. Because that condemnation is beating you down. And then as you move along with, with uh, decisions that you have to make uh, uh, in your uh, marriage, in your family, that condemnation will poison you in such a way that you will, not, you will act cowardly, you will not be honest, it will just mess you up. That issue, you should have a clean spirit to deal with the issues. No prejudices. This is what I think, my opinion, all that's gone. You follow the Holy Spirit. But as long as that condemnation is on you, you can't, you can't hardly do anything right, and you walk around miserable. Say, I'm free. I'm free from all condemnation. Now, a lot of times we put that on ourselves, okay, by our thinking. That wasn't good enough. It's never good enough, is it, Rick? Never. I'll come along, I say, wow, that's a good job, Rick. And Rick looks at it and he goes like this. Well, what? What's wrong with it? Nothing. Nothing. But he allows sometimes that spirit of perfection 
to beat him down. Is that right, Missy? <laughs> hey, we love you anyway. I hope you love me. This is what you see. See, we got to get honest with one another. In fact, the Bible says, confess your faults one to another. Are we there yet? I want to let's move on into spirituality. Overcome what? Evil with what? Somebody tell me. Overcome evil with what? Good. How many people you know that knows that verse? Put it on the board and we're going to go home. I can't believe it's 25 to 9. I'm going to let you go now. Isn't I good, man? I tell you. God bless you. And don't go out with condemnation. Meditate on what we studied tonight. What you got, Yolanda?